on to interpreting a table given a situation. Interpreting a table given a situation. And for this one, I will move my head back up here, my talking head. Violet starts the semester with $150 in her student account, lunch account. Each day she spends $375 on lunch. The table shows the function relating the amount of money or remaining in her lunch account to the number of days Violet has purchased lunch. Find the X, Y intercepts and describe what they mean in the context of a situation. Knowing that our X intercept is always where Y is zero will help us, just like knowing our Y intercept is always where X is zero will help us. Where do we see Y zero? Down here when X is 40. All right, and what is that X intercept telling us? This is saying, Violet has zero dollars left after 40, what? That's 40 days, 40 days of buying lunch. How do I know that? You say, well, it says this is her balance in her account. And if her balance is zero, that means every day she spent money. We see it going down 375, 375, 375 every single day until, uh, and I know it's not going down by exactly 375. It's because this one's going down by two days. So that would be like going down by 750. This one's three days. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's going down by more, but it's because we have more days in between. But it's essentially going down 375 a day until she hits zero after 40 days. Okay, and then where's it zero? Zero right here and 150 on the Y. And what does it tell us? It tells us that Violet's account has $150 in it. In it. After zero days of buying lunch. And I am mixing my letters, buying lunch. Okay, Violet's account has $150 in it after zero days of buying lunch. That's it, that's what we know from it. So it actually gives us some information. Okay, again, pause this, write down what you need. We're going down to solving equations by graphing. And for this, you're going to want to use Desmos.com. That's what you're going to see me using, Desmos.com. It's great. And let's talk about this. So if I start with an equation, it's a related function. If the equation is 3x equals 6, oh, you can't see this, sorry. If an equation is 3x equals 6, the related function is f of x equals 3x minus 6, or y equals 3x minus 6. Just like if an equation is x squared plus 3x equals 5, the associated equation is f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 5, or y equals x squared plus 3x minus 5. How do we make the changes to a function? Uh, how do we change an equation to a function? Well, look at 2x plus 2 equals 3. Step 1, we want to make the equation equal to 0. So I'm going to take 2x plus 2 equals 3. All I need to do is subtract 3 from both sides. Boom. And we get 2x minus 1 equals 0. Once we get this, guys, we're going to replace the 0 with y. So in other words, 2x minus 1 equals y. Or we could say y equals 2x minus 1. Last but not least, when we want to write it in function notation, we just write f of x equals 2x minus 1. So I'm going to add up here, or f of x. Same thing. So let's look at this right here, guys. I want to change negative 2x plus 7 equals 1 to its related function. Okay, so to do that, let's write it down. Negative 2x plus 7 equals 1. Step 1, set it equal to 0. Boom. Negative 2x plus 6 equals 0. Now I'm going to replace that with y. Negative 2x plus 6 equals y. Or we can say y equals negative 2x plus 6. could also say f of x equals negative 2x plus 6. 
Now, we want to use this to solve for, we want to use the graph of this function to solve for the x, y intercept. I know I've given you the graph, but I want to show you how to use Desmos, guys. So if I write in there, negative, here, I'll use the keyboard right here so you can see me doing it, negative 2x plus 6. Look at this graph right here. And we see the y-intercept, and we see the x-intercept, which, right, 1, 2, 3, boom, 3, 0 is the x-intercept. Let's fill that in. And then we see 2, 4, 6, so 0, 6 is the y-intercept. Oh. And that is how we use Desmos. Big fan of Desmos. All right. Remember, the x-intercept is also the root, I've been saying this, or zero of the function. We call it the zero of the function because, well, let's find out. Let's plug in the val x value of the x-intercept. Okay, so looking back at this function, we see the x-intercept, the x-value is 3. Let's plug in 3 to this. So I'm going to have f of 3 equals negative 2 times 3 plus 6. Well, what's negative 2 times 3? That's negative 6 plus 6 equals 0. Hmm. Look at that. When you plug in the x-intercept, it'll give you a 0 every time. Okay. Pause this right now what you need. We're going on to the last little bit of this lesson right here. Okay, again, take a minute. Why don't you change this to its related function? Write down the x and y intercepts from this graph. I'm going to go ahead and do it on Desmos when I do it just to show you how you can do it. And then let's roll. Ready, set, pause it. Okay, I'm assuming you did it. Let's do this. Uh, I'm just going to write plus 3, plus 3. Now I can't combine that with anything, so I just have x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And I'm just going to go ahead and skip straight to f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, x squared minus 4x plus 3. Let's go. Oop, wrong button. Atomic videos. So I'm going to say, boom, x that out. I'm going to do x, and then you hit the squared button, right? x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 3 plus 3. Boom. And let's look at what we have here. So we have two x-intercepts. And don't forget, what is the value of y at every x-intercept? Zero. Fill that in already. And we know the value of x at every y-intercept is zero. So let's look. Our x values are going to be 1 and 3. 1 and 3. Fill that in. And we see our y value is going to be at 1, 2, 3. Boom. How nice and easy is that? Using that graph really helps. Okay. So we got that all filled in. The solutions to a nonlinear function. So this is considered nonlinear. Nonlinear. And we know that, guys, because it has an x squared term. If you have an xy together like that, or x squared, or to really any power, it's going to be nonlinear. So the solutions to a nonlinear function are still the zeros. Plug in both to show y. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to plug in f of 1 equals 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 3, which that's 1 minus 4 plus 3. 1 minus 4, that's negative 3 plus 3, which equals 0. Boom. And then let's try and plug in the 3. We're going to have f of 3 equals 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 3, which is what? 9 minus 12 plus 3. 9 minus 12 is negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. It's the zeros. Awesome. Now we're going to use a graph to estimate a solution. Sometimes we got to estimate a little bit because we can't be exact. 
Siobhan is on his way home from vacation. Let's move this up a little bit. Siobhan is on his way home from vacation. He is starting 818 miles from home and drives about 65 miles per hour. The function D equals 818 minus 65 H represents Javon's distance from home. D after driving H hours. That makes sense. Multiply the speed times the hours he's driven. That should give us the miles he's driven. Subtract that from the total mileage and we know how far he is from home. That makes sense. Javon's, uh, how many hours does it take Javon to get home? Step one, we're going to use the graph to estimate the x-intercept. And if I look right here, uh, he gets home a distance of zero. See, it's two in between every tick mark. So if this is 13, gosh, that looks to be about 12.5. 12.4, 12.5, anything close to that, I would accept on this because we're really estimating. So let's say 12.4. And again, we know the y value is zero. So what does this tell us? It takes about 12.4 hours for, I'm just going to write J, it's a long name, J to get home. Now, we're going to calculate this algebraically. Calculate this algebraically. Remember, D equals zero when, boom, are you ready for this? When he, oh, I'm sorry, when he is home. So let's plug that in. Zero equals 818 minus 65 H. Let's solve that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add 65 H to both sides. Well, 65H, just to make it positive, I get 65H equals 818, boom, divide both sides by 65, divide by 65, we're going to round to the nearest tenth, and I'm going to get that H is approximately 2.5. Approximately 12.6. So 12.6, what hours? Okay. So it takes J about 12.6 hours to get home. And that's much more accurate. However, notice, is it still pretty close, close to our estimate? Yeah, it's only 0.2 away. So I'm just telling you, that's a matter of minutes. I would say our estimate was pretty awesome, even considering how inaccurate that graph is because of how little the tick marks are and how much they cover. But something we need to talk about is we are making some assumptions here. What are we assuming? Well, we're assuming he was exactly 1,800 or 818 miles from home. It was exactly 118 miles from home. We're rarely exactly anything. We're also assuming he never stopped. My family's in the indication, oh my gosh, if we get it two hours down the road, it's a miracle. And last, we're assuming he drove exactly, there's that word again, 65 miles per hour the whole time. Like uniform speed, never slowing down for traffic, wrecks, anything like that. No stop signs, stop lights. It's boom, 818 miles of 65 cruise control all the way. All right, well, this is a big lesson, guys. It's going to be split up into some parts on the video. So with that said, peace out.